In this episode of Car and Driver Abroad, we travel to Germany to try out the Wiesmann GT MF5, a wild near 550 horsepower coupe with a BMW M Power heart. On road and flat out on track, we discover whether this retro machine is as wonderful as it is weird. BMW produce some fantastic cars, they always have. But times change and the M division don't make light, simple cars anymore. They make cars designed to do everything. But imagine the power of a modern M car with the lightness and focus of an E30 M3. Now that would be something special. Well BMW might not build that car, but it exists. This is the Wiesmann GT MF5, powered by a V8 twin turbocharged M power engine with 547 horsepower. Two seats, lightweight, one purpose to be the ultimate thrill. This engine might have found its natural home in this car. The basic ingredients of this car are mouth-watering. With a steel space frame chassis and fiberglass panels, it weighs around 1,400 kilos or 3,100 pounds. That's not very much for this huge twin power 4.4 litre BMW engine to haul around. It's rear wheel drive, of course, and it drives through a six speed automatic gearbox as fitted to the hateful X6M. In fact, this car lifts its entire engine and box from the X5 and X6M. Now that is some recycling that I can approve of. The basic balance of this car is superb. It's got a big V8 up front, but no real understeer at all. It goes into oversteer pretty quick when those turbos come in. But if you can just meter out the power, it just stays with you, it helps you along. It feels like a car that's been sorted by really, really good engineers. It's not a lash up at all. This is a proper, fully cohesive car. So freed of all that weight, this twin power V8 really comes alive. Always feels quick in something like a BMW X5M, but in this thing, it's just off the scale. I also thought the six-speed auto might feel a bit lazy, but not at all. It feels really, really responsive. The Wiesmann badge is a gecko and their crazy factory takes the same form. It's a bold reminder that the car should be agile, light and sticky. It's quite a place, surgically clean, quiet, and with fastidious attention to every little detail. A world away from the spit, swarf, and din of the long dead English sports car factories that inspire Wiesmann's retro design. Around the central production area, there are trim shops where the bespoke interiors take shape. There are people creating intricate wiring looms. Nearly everything is produced in-house, although the drivetrains are pure BMW, which is pretty good to know. The cars themselves are wheeled from station to station on rigs with small teams working together to ensure optimum quality. It's a really serene place, but typically German. It would make you feel very good about writing a very large cheque. The GTM F5 is Wiesmann's biggest hitter and it costs from around $200,000. Or at least it would if it was sold in the US. Wiesmann don't currently market their cars in North America, but they're hoping to change that in the very near future. So where does Wiesmann come from? And how have they built such a great reputation in places like Monaco, Switzerland and the Middle East? A reputation that allows them to sell around 200 cars per year globally. Marcus Massman, who works on the team developing these cars, gives us the lowdown. Well, it's, uh, it all started way back in uh, 1988, when uh, two brothers Wiesmann, Martin and Friedhelm, uh, had the idea to, uh, well, to create their own car. 
I uh, went across several different car fairs and uh, saw different kit cars and anything, but they didn't find what they were looking for. They were looking for something with uh, classic looks, uh, but with uh, reliable technology. And uh, so they uh, thought about the idea, creating their own looks and integrating, uh, well, uh, OEM, um, state-of-the-art technology. And uh, they found an, a, a perfect drivetrain uh, uh, at BMW from the uh, 3 Series. Um, and they, uh, Martin, the, the engineer of, uh, the both, uh, of those brothers, um, started to uh, develop a frame, which was a, a tube frame made of steel. And uh, he developed the design uh, with a glass fiber reinforced composite and uh, integrated the BMW drivetrain in it. I also used some uh, components from the uh, braking system and from the suspension from the BMW. And uh, you put all that together, and the result was the, uh, the MF3 model, um, which was uh, really a high performance sports car because uh, it had a really wonderful combination of power to weight, or a wonderful ratio of power to weight. And uh, at that time, uh, there was nothing else on the market like that. Classic looks, modern technology, and a really high performance. Okay, and you, obviously you, you buy the engines in, but talk us through how the car is put together in the factory. Is everything done here, from building the chassis up through to the body and putting it all together? Yeah, most, most is done here. Uh, as we said, the drivetrain is being delivered by BMW, but we start with uh, assembling the whole chassis here in-house. We are assembling the whole suspension linkage and everything here in-house and uh, the uh, glass fiber parts, so the body parts, used to be uh, made here in-house but the uh, number of cars we are producing is too big to do it in-house 100%. So we have a, a few supplies um, producing body parts for us but everything is put together here by hand. Okay, so we've seen the factory and had a taste of the GTM F5, but how would you sum up what Wiesmann does in one sentence? Huh. I would say we fulfill dreams of big boys. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're uh, creating something uh, unique on the market, and uh, yeah, we're working together as a team to, to fulfill dreams. Making dreams come true is a nice marketing line, isn't it? But does the GTM F5 stack up away from an empty airfield and the noble art of wrecking rear tyres? Well, the drivetrain certainly does. The 4.4 litre V8 sounds terrific. And although it can't have the throttle response of the best normally aspirated engines, for a turbo motor, it's very, very good. I wish it had the M5 7-speed dual-clutch box, but this 6-speed auto is very responsive either to the paddles or the sequential shifter here. But the ratios designed for a hulking great SUV, remember, feel too short in the context of this much lighter car. You really want to utilise the massive torque delivery of this engine, and to do so you have to be at least one gear, maybe two gears higher than your instincts tell you. So what about the chassis? There's grip, response and balance in abundance at 10 tenths on the airfield and that does translate to the road. The ride is firm but it's actually really supple and it doesn't hop or skip around. There's some tram lining under braking as you'd expect with those huge 20 inch tyres but it never gets out of hand and it sort of adds to the excitement. One area that deserves particular attention is the steering. It's very quick, very accurate but also full of feedback. It's very hard to combine those things. This car gets it spot on. This car's also got the optional Move It brakes. They're huge six piston calipers, massive discs, and for a car of this weight, they give you real confidence, fantastic feedback, monster power. So the car feels light, responsive, and agile but it also initially feels quite intimidating. You sit really, really low with this huge bonnet and wings rising up ahead of you. And those massive rear haunches feel about eight feet wide. It takes a while until you're comfortable threading it through these narrow lanes. But when you get comfortable with the car, those feelings do evaporate. The polish of this BMW drivetrain 
It's matched by a really controlled, progressive chassis. There's no understeer in this car at all on the road. And when it does start to slide at the rear, it's progressive, gives you plenty of warnings. Of course, having said that, this is still a light car with a massively powerful engine and you have to treat it with respect. If the torque gets hold of those rear wheels, it can feel like quite a wild ride. Yeah, this thing is a monster, it's a proper monster, which is sort of what I hoped. You don't want it to feel too tame and this definitely doesn't. Of course, a $200,000 car is really all about how it makes you feel. And here, the Wiesmann is a real car of contrast. The interior is simple, it's well finished. But I guess I'd sort of expected almost Pagani levels of attention to detail. There's no precious materials, there's none of that exquisite detailing. So the materials might not say $200,000, but the performance, the chassis balance, the cohesiveness of this car, that really tells of the love, the attention, and the expertise poured into this car. Now, does it make sense in a world of R8 V10s and 911 turbos? Well, in any rational way, of course it doesn't. But for a guy who's got a 911 that he commutes in, a Range Rover in the garage for the family, and maybe a Ferrari tucked up for weekends, the Wiesmann offers something different, something unique, and that's what these customers want. That's why, to them, it makes sense. And I have to say, it is fantastic fun. I really do not want to give it back. So what have we learnt here at Wiesmann? Well that their cars, and in particular this GT MF5, might look retro, but the performance they offer is anything but. This car is so fast and it is a driver's car, pure and simple. If BMW ever get back to this formula and build a car of this spec, I'll be a very happy man. But in the meantime, Wiesmann are doing a brilliant job. I'll take one of these, no problem at all.